So I'm still in the sunroom here, as you can see. You can well see. I'm in the sunroom. It's not so sunny today, but it it's just been one of those mornings. What can I say? I've already looked at all of the news articles and some really disturbing news is coming in. Oh my God, I got to set up or push because I can't look at my gut any longer. I've got to move that up. Ah! I've got to and start wearing looser shirts. I, the pandemic has put like 30 pounds on me and I wish it was that easy to take it off. Okay, so if you don't know who I am, I'm Suzanne Tidkemeyer. I um, wrote for Patheos for nearly 10 years, a column called No Longer Quivering that had to do with fundamentalist evangelical type religions and quiverful. This whole thing going on with the Supreme Court with the SCOTUS is something we've discussed over and over and over and over again at No Longer Quivering. Um, Cindy and I have been talking about it, Cindy Kunzman and other ones of my girlfriends. I'm getting all kinds of crazy phone calls. I'm getting messages. Everyone's having kind of a mental breakdown over this moment and time. And I am too, because it's really, it's unprecedented that we would overturn something that is so fundamental, a right to decide what you do with your body. You know, if this was men, that you would be able to get abortions on street, on every street corner. Shoot, they'd probably give them away at the 7-Eleven with a big gulp purchase. That's how common they would be because we know how men are. And I hate to say that because I love men. I have a number of men in my life that I love, not just my husband. And this is, yeah, this is not the moment for them to lecture us about anything. There can be complications with both. I'm very familiar with complications from the latter. Yeah, there, there have been. So before I get started, I want to say don't bully anybody I'm talking about today. Don't even bully that troll. Don't bully. Don't harass. Don't go real life. Hit the like and subscribe if you feel like it. If you don't, that's fine too. Okay, so... Um, this morning, I woke up to a disturbing reality of news articles that were talking about different procedures that are now forbidden in certain states. I think the most shocking one was there's a couple of states where they were talking about um, they had instructed doctors in that state to not give treatments to women that could harm the fetus. What do I mean by treatments? I mean like chemotherapy, radiation, biologic drugs, many different things that harm fetuses to save your life. So they have put all these restrictions in place in some of these states where you can't even get a life-saving drug. You can't have any kind of treatment. You have to wait until the baby is delivered to receive those kinds of treatments. Women are going to die. I worked with a woman who had a topic pregnancy. She was blacking out on the way to the hospital. Java man, I know that to be true. I've known people who've had that as well. And you have these men, these male legislators who are saying things like, well, they can just implant, re-implant those. That is bonk. An atopic pregnancy is life-threatening. It has to be removed. It kills some women. And all the silly shilly showing around about what is permitted or not permitted, it's going to have terrible consequences. And for these doctors to have already been told in their states that they have to stop treatment. I mean, that, that gives me oh, chills. I mean, and ruling on things like biologic and saying that can hurt the baby. Well, all the new vaccines for COVID are biologics. They are... Um, medicines that were derived from the DNA of other people. And some of these rulings are just insane that they're telling women that they cannot have these things done. I think the one that scares me even more than that is the fact that so many of these places have instructed doctors that they won't be able to do DNCs for any reason any longer. No post miscarriage DNCs, no DNCs when you have endometriosis and you're bleeding so bad that you're going to pass out or whatever. Um, none of that. 
no for any reason. And that's what's really frightening to me because all of these things that I'm mentioning are essential life treatments to keep you living and breathing and moving and grooving. Um, I've been really open about this. When I first started my period at 11 years old, 11, if you can imagine that. From that moment and told my hysterectomy, I had nothing but problems with my body. Nothing but problems with that part of my body. The person that Alito based his reasoning on also hunted witches and believed that men are allowed to rape their wives. I know that. That's what's frightening is the misogyny that is completely embedded in all of this because of who he was basing this on. So throughout my years from 11 to I think it was 44 when I finally had my hysterectomy, I had nothing but problems. I had endometriosis from the time I was young. Back in the Stone Ages I'm from, they didn't have good treatments. They didn't have treatments at all. Women died from these things. I didn't die, but, you know, I, my teenage years, I can remember I would always have to take two to three days off from school or whatever, from work, and lay in the bed eating Tylenol 3s to get through it. It was that kind of torturous problem that spun to having to have DNCs once or twice a year to, to deal with the various problems of having the endometriosis. I always said I like being pregnant because it, it helped for a while. Rationalization, you're right. That's what it was. I'm not a I'm not fully awake. I'm drinking caffeine this morning. Rationalization. The outcome was decided first, and then the reasoning was backfilled to justify it. Java man, that's how a lot of these really bad laws have come into existence. They rule on it, and then they find stupid ways to justify it afterwards. So I'm not at all surprised that Alito did that. Um, I am hearing people say that, oh, let me go back. So I'm talking about having had DNCs. Now, not only are they telling them that they can't do DNCs for any reason in some of these states that already have restrictive abortion rules, they're telling them they can't even teach it in medical schools. So they're trying to shut the standards of procedure so that no woman has it ever for any reason, even reasons that have nothing to do with the um, having been pregnant at all. And you do that and women will die. I mean, this is really what this is. This is denying women the kind of health care that will save their lives. That's what this entire thing is about. And it just keeps getting worse and worse every day. I keep hearing more and more stories and seeing articles about this, including women who've already been denied life-saving DNCs after having miscarriages and things like that. We've already started to see some of this. So it's just going to get worse as it goes on. Um, I forgot where I was going to go with all of this. How sad, how sad, how sad, because I didn't take my meds yet today. Oh, let me think for half a second. I know I said that I was going to talk about. So we have a lot of people I know, and I have a lot of people in my real life that have been rejoicing over this thing. They think it's the greatest thing of all time. So how do we cope with those people? And where is the line? Where do you decide that what the other person is saying is not acceptable? And you're going to say, hell no, shut up. And this is why and explain that women are going to die from this this thing and that this is just more part of the patriarchy's plans to, um, hey, Saturn days, to suppress women. This is just part of the whole patriarchy submission of women, take away all rights to women thing that they've been on for a trip they've been on for some years. This is just going to keep getting worse as these idiots keep getting into power. So for me, that's a challenge because I'm supposed to go this week and spend the week with my friend in the little Virginia town I lived in. Hey, Michelle, but it's not going to happen now. I had to email her and say, hey, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's a freaking lie. I'm not so busy. I am. The problem is, is I, I can't. 
I can't rationalize doing it. Hey, Brenda Lee, she is one of the ones that has been rejoicing in this, even after telling me that she thought that it should remain legal because of 12 year olds being raped by their uncles or something. So she's glorying in this and I can't be around that. I mean, it was bad enough when I was there for just two days and her husband started watching Kenneth Copeland. And my husband can tell you, I started singing COVID-19, COVID-19. I blow you away with the wind of God. But in front of the guy, because I just I had no chill left. I have no filter. And I'm afraid because I have no filter, I'll go beat her up with my tongue. And I really don't want to do that. I really want to keep the friendship. So that becomes our challenge. I don't think that is a rationalization. What you can't do is justify it. I don't know. You know, I know I've heard all kinds of different reasons they're coming up with as to why they've done this. And for me, and I know for many of you, becomes where do you draw your line where do you tell your friends hey that's not an acceptable thing to even talk about around me where is this and um it's it's tricky it just is i don't i, I don't know how to walk that line yet i don't have that that level of confidence in my own ability to be able to do that with a broken filter so then we look at things happening like that troll going after Amy Duggar King for her backwards theology on this crap. I wasn't happy when Amy Duggar King was doing the same thing my friend was doing, which is praise Jesus. The same thing that Jill Rodriguez and so many other women still stuck in the quiverful movement are doing they they're approving of the abuse of the mo their own selves and they don't even understand that i don't think that hating on them is necessarily going to bring anybody to a realization as to what this law what this overturning of roe v wade and putting this back in the hands of the state does they're thinking that the rest of us are wacko. I've been thinking about that myself. I choose to leave it as they have a right to their political opinions I do not agree with. Java man, I'm struggling with that. I'm struggling with that. I, I'm willing to do that with my friends who are distant. I'm not willing to do that with my friends who are in my face, like my friend, like my friend in Virginia here that I dearly love, but I don't know if I can be around her. It was bad enough, like I said, when her husband started taking Kenneth Copeland seriously. We all know that Kenneth Copeland is kind of a whack job. I'm just going to come right out and say that. I don't even consider him to be like a legitimate minister of the gospel because the things that he says are just so completely freaking out there. I love the, um, the guys on um, YouTube that do the remixes of him. And since I have zero filter, for me, this is going to be a problem ever going around her for long periods of time again. So I'm thinking I might go down for a day or two. But it's going to have to be towards the end of my trip because I just don't I don't have that chill right now. And I struggle to try to figure out where that chill is. Like I said, that troll is going after Amy Duggar King as hard as she can right now because two pronged. First, Amy has said this thing that she doesn't approve of with the SCOTUS decision. Instead of doing like many of us have done, which is to say, hey, that kind of sucks. You suck if you believe that. And moving on, because uh, Amy Duggar King ended the relationship, she's going after her full, her full bore right now. Full crazy bore and saying things like... Um, Pulling up all of her financials, showing that she's being sued for um, not paying her business rent. She's being sued for various things, that there's been liens by the tax people, all kinds of just awful things. And here's the thing. Many of us have had these awful things in our past. They don't define us. 
the troll that should not be named is desperate for content. Absolutely. All of us have these things. You know, I've been really open about that myself. We had a store back in Virginia in the early 90s, and we lost our asses. I'm, when I mean we lost our asses, I'm talking, I I think by the time I added up, it was like 200, that was like, not 200, it was $100,000 we lost, roughly. And there was fighting with the state of Virginia taxation. There was fighting with the IRS. Yes, there were liens until we ironed everything out. I was lucky. My landlord let me out of my lease. And I was able to sell my equipment and my supplies to someone else and let them try their hand at it. But, you know, Amy apparently is going online with her clothing store. And the troll that shall not be named has also been bashing her for the quality of the clothing, for not doing returns, for sending the wrong. It's just all kinds of just crazy stuff. So, you know, this is more than just somebody holding a political view you don't agree with. This is personal, and this is what that troll does. She digs for everything. But, I, you know, back to my what I was saying with the store is at that time, you could have pulled financials on me and seen lien number one, lien number two, this lawsuit, that until we managed to straighten it all out and pay everybody off and come to some kind of conclusions. Can we also expect these people to not be against Roe versus Wade? I don't think so. I think the problem is, is that it is so inculcated in them. You have to look at the history of, I'm going to call it the history of Fundy Town, but it really isn't. It's the history of the evangelical church. Back in the 70s, none of them had a damn thing against abortion. They didn't even mention it was a part of the theology or anything. What happened was someone, and I can't remember right off the top of my head who it was, decided that this was going to be the hill they were going to die on. They have used the Roe v. Wade pro-life stance in order to distract people from awful things that the church is doing. I've seen in those years evangelicalism go completely off the rails. I was telling a friend of mine yesterday, I don't even know how you can call yourself a Christ, a true Christian if you're acting like a GCB, like most of them do act. Google GCB it was actually a pretty funny book, and it was a pretty okay television series. It stands for Good Christian Biatches. So when you see that that kind of behavior, looking at this going, where is your love? Where is, you know, you look at the words of Jesus, and you look at the, what they're saying, and it's like, how can you expect them? I mean, how can they do that? I, I don't get that mindset. Now, a lot of people in evangelical town tend not to think. That's one of the things that they enjoy about the religion. I've told that I've heard that before from people. They've said, well, you know, I don't have to waste brain power thinking about X, Y, or Z. I can just concentrate on what's true, what's lovely, what's. Oh, Brenda Lee. That's not a fun discussion to be having at all right now with a with a with a young a, a child in that age group. I had to have the masturbation conversation with my daughter at that age because of the time the boy got up and started talking about his porn and his masturbation habits. Now Jesus praise Jesus and had completely healed him of his compulsion to masturbate. So we've had those not so fun conversations in our house. So you have my sympathy, you know, my sympathy, empathy, and cringe at the same time. Been there, done that. No fun at all. The percentage of Christian women who get abortions match that of the general population. Java man, exactly. I wrote about that in a chapter of my book on these rulings because I've had to add that in talking about the ones I know of personally that had abortions in the church that hid their abortions and why and how it's frowned upon, but 
Christian women and evangelical and fundamentalism have abortions at exactly the same rate as others. So they're hurting themselves. They just don't realize it yet. They don't realize it. And that to me is the really sad point. They're going to suffer this in disproportionate numbers. And they won't be able to turn to anybody looking for help. And so part of me thinks that we need to keep the lines of communications with women, like my friend, open. Because they're going to be them. They're going to be in, they're still going to be having hard times and, and getting pregnant and having various and sundry problems with it and having to get abortions. Do they think abortion is unforgivable for others? They get automatic forgiveness for such. Java man, I actually remember how abortion was treated in my old Quiverful church. If you had had an abortion, okay, and you got up and said how awful your abortion was, how you had suffered all of these demons or regrets or whatever and begged for forgiveness, you were forgiven. It was said to be covered by the blood of Jesus. And that's actually not a bad way to approach it. I just want to say that because if you believe the words of Jesus, he talks about if you believe in him, seek him, he's the way, the truth, the light, then all of that stuff is is as far as from the east is to the west. And I believe that. I believe that that as long as you have confess what you've done. And there's power in confession. No matter if you don't believe in Christianity at all, there is always power in trying to make the wrong right. There always is. That's one of the things I carried away that was positive of my old church is the ability to apologize and to keep short offense lists and to say to people, Hey, I screwed up. Please forgive me. It's made a difference in my life. It's been transformative. So that's one of those things that I carried away that was good. It wasn't all bad. I'm going to say there were some things that have been good for me that I still practice to this day. The keeping um, very few offenses. It's like even on Twitter, there are very few people I fight with. Even if they don't like me, I don't get drug into their space to fight with them because I keep short offense lists. I keep my offenses for those who do horrible stuff. My problem with some of these people is that they're very judgmental towards others, but they get a pass. Exactly, Java man. And that's not right. I mean, again, I refer to the words of Jesus. If you are living in such a way that you don't have offenses towards people and all that, you just really need to just let them have their journey and just say, okay, I'm not going to take that in. If they do that, that's on them. It's like I was trying to explain to my friend the other day about another friend the other day about um, a mutual friend of ours who used to rant and screech all the time that abortion was sending everybody to hell, not abortion, but that homosexuality was sending everybody to hell. This turned out to have most of her kids are gay now. One is trans. And so this other friend of ours that's kind of halfway in and out said, how can she call herself a good Christian? And she has raised these children up who are gay and trans and whatever. And she's not foaming at the mouth about it and cutting them off. And I just had to say, you know, Jesus never said a damn thing about gay or trans. She's loving her children as they are without saying anything judgmental towards her kids. And I applaud that. I think for her, that is a huge step forward because she used to talk all the time about, oh, those gays are ruining the world, blah, 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 blah. And this is like kind of like, no, that's not at all what's going on here. And so it's a challenge. And, you know, it talks in the Bible about believers being like like iron sharpens iron i think they think that that means they can be ugly to other people that are not in the same mindset as them she did realize she was wrong even though she still says she's praying for them to switch 
to be hetero. She's told me that. That's her prayer life. It's for them to be hetero. <laughs> and I've challenged her a couple times and said, but will you still continue to love them and accept their partners and and whatever if that doesn't happen? Because we've had those long conversations too. Um, I love my, my girlfriends that have not totally stepped away because they, myself, Cindy Kunzman, so many others, we are a work in progress. We all are. The canvas is, has not been finished painting yet, painted yet. We all deal with crap that we have to just work through on our own. We have to take that journey and, and reach those points. So for me, that's been critical thinking about, well, how can I keep doing this when there's all this other stuff going on? And so for me, that's that's a going to be a challenge. I don't know how I'm going to do that with with the abortion stuff they're all talking about now. So who knows? Who knows? I don't know. My journey's not done yet. And I don't have all the answers. I never did. I never pretended to. I do know that my journey away has been one of those things that has occurred kind of organically. And, you know, I was talking to Sydney Gunsman this morning and she was talking about recovering from some abuse she had had in one of the groups that was recovery from that sort of thing and had gone on and abused her and how she is finally in a good headspace where she can start to recover. Again, timing. Timing is everything, and it has to be the right time. I don't care how many times you can tell somebody, hey, don't hurt, don't hate on gays or don't whatever, before it actually sinks in. You know, we used to say in Christianity that it took seven times of being witnessed to before somebody came to the Lord and, and used to pray. Lord, let me be the seventh time. And so I think that's the same with getting out. It takes a while and you have to you have to change out your inner monologue enough to make that happen, too. And that's not always the easiest thing to do. It makes you quite uncomfortable sometimes. Particularly when you're fighting against some kind of very deeply ingrained thing. Example. I used to be very opposed to Hispanics. I know that's kind of funny because I'm living in a Hispanic country now, but Hispanics in the U.S., I was not very nice to them. And this was all taking place during my Fundy Town days. Now it's kind of like I can see that I was completely 100% wrong and, and go from there. So we all have those things that we're dealing with and we're trying to get through. I don't know what's going to happen with any of us. Now, it's kind of sad to have to admit that in this time where everything's going haywire like this and we have to decide where our lines are. Word on the street is that Alito is also mad at Roberts and not ruling Obamacare unconstitutional. So this is where he made his stand. I am not a bit surprised by that either. I haven't kept up on any of that lately, but I would not be a bit surprised. You know, I remember my very liberal friends that would rant about Justice Roberts, but I got to say he's mostly pretty fair. I think overall, compared to a lot of the conservatives, he's not as nut bar as some of them and some of the things that have been said and done. The one that I'm extremely angry with is guess who? It is um, Clarence Tom, Tom's, Thomas. Why? Because of his wife being so involved in the January 6th thing. She sent out emails to almost a thousand people trying to get them to join in on the January 6th thing. She used a clip by Quiverful Enforcer Greg um, Jeffrey Bodkin as one of her things about why you should join in. And Jeffrey Bodkin brings his own pile of problems. He, he and his daughters have threatened to sue Cindy Kunzman before. Java man, I saw that. You know damn good and well he's not going to overturn Loving versus Virginia. Because if he had to overturn that, that would 
that would invalidate his own marriage. So you know damn good and well he's not going to do that. He's not going to do anything like that. And the sad thing for me is I know the church that he goes to. I knew the church that Pence goes to. When I was part of the whole Quiverful movement and the evangelical thing here, we would go to conferences at those places. We would go to conferences at these different churches and get to know them. So even though Pence and others have tried to hide their theology, like I said to those people at uh, Bethel Reading, when their publicity department kept contacting me and saying, you don't know our theology. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, I do. Been there, done that, gotten the tattoo. Yeah. So there you, I know, I know. So there you go. They say all politics are personal and local. And his list proves that of nothing else, because you know damn good and well he's not going to be able to overturn Loving versus Virginia. I'm going to have to pull that movie up today and take a look. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. I hate to say it. I've been stuck on Snowflake Mountain. I don't know if any of you have seen that. I usually don't watch trashy reality shows, but I watched Love After Lockup. Now I'm stuck on Snowflake Mountain, which I've gotten the hugest laugh out of because it's a show that takes a bunch of 20-something failure to launch types that are living off their parents' time and living large, going clubbing and wearing designer clothes. and puts them in the wilderness. Not much of a wilderness. It's more of a regular camping experience. But for these kids, it's a world apart. It's a world they're struggling with. So I'm watching that and laughing. So there we go. I think we're going to have to continue to watch and vote. I told a friend of mine today who said that he was not optimistic about any chances of any very conservative people getting voted out because the Supreme Court had overturned Roe v. Wade and kicked it back to the state level so far from the next elections that it would not impact it. But I think that's not true. I think that with what we have going on right now with the whole, um, with this whole women's health thing, as women start to die from the outcomes of this stuff, the outrage will build and people will realize as the outrage builds and they try to overturn other things, this is going to have echoes for a long time. I am hopeful that this brings us some more moderate candidates. I've said before, I'm not really comfortable with the extreme left wing any more than I am the extreme right wing. I tend to be moderate in a lot of my views and I tell everybody my political views are feed everybody, clothe, um, get everybody shelter, make sure everybody has opportunities to go to college or whatever, or trade school or whatever. Anything more than that on health care. I'm all about all those things. I'm about the things that help people, not harm them. There was an old Ren and Stimpy where Ren was split into his evil and his apathetic side. That reminds me of the two political parties. Java Man, that's exactly right. And the, here's the thing. I spent time about two weeks ago, we first got here, with a friend of mine who worked at Bureau of Labor Statistics and knew my husband pretty well. He, he and I spent a lovely sunny afternoon sitting outside, and he was telling me about his journey away from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. He tells a story where he claims that he was approached by the right wing to screw up the consumer price index for Obama. He says that he was approached and told to join their secret society. Well, he's been telling this tale for some years. And I, at first I was kind of like, this is just too crazy. There's no way this happened. I'm starting to believe there may be some truth to it. Cause he started telling me his parents. Okay. His father was the mayor of Berkeley, California for some years. So this is a friend of mine who has lived West Coast, East Coast, all sorts of places. And his telling the tale of this is just, at first it was like, this is crazy. Now I'm thinking, no, this might be actually be true. I'll say those slutty McSluttersons should have kept their legs closed and wouldn't have been in the position. Uh, of course, that's what they're going to say. 
cutting off all help for the women in their own group. That and that's where I think we why we have to keep the reins of communicate the lines of communication open with that side because they're going to turn to those of us that can help them go camping, as they call it on Facebook. You're not allowed to say abortion or I'll help you to get an abortion. So we've dubbed, people have dubbed it camping. So I'm going to dub it camping too. So going back to the story about my friend, he's telling his tale about being approached for the right side and then talking to his mother and finding out his mother and father were members of a secret society on the left side and were involved with that. So now he's looking at everything in his life and he is, um, oh, my hair is driving me nuts. When it falls off, I... It always feels like bugs crawling. So anyway, long story short, here he is telling his tale to me about his parents being in a secret society on the left side. And he's telling me about various people that he's known through the years, through his parents' political years and political ambitions, where uh, they were on the left side and they were involved with CP and CS, okay? So, who knows? But I'm just throwing that out there. He claims some of that is true. That might be. There's rumors of that. So it might be that we have two wings of the same bird that are equally uh, equally destructive and toxic. But we don't know that until more comes out about that. I always thought it was amusing that thanks to Mark's Stanford, hiking the Appalachian Trail is now a euphemism for cheating on your spouse. That was, yeah, that was definitely crazy, especially since there are parts of the Appalachian Trail now that actually have cell phone towers, especially the parts that go through Shenandoah National Park. And yeah, I can testify to that. So if he is saying that he was incommunicado, he is so full of BS. Yeah, and you're right. That is a funny, funny, funny euphemism now for cheating on your spouse. Hiking the Appalachian Trail. So we're going camping. We are going to go camping. And like I said, there is zero camping in Costa Rica. Costa Rica does not allow abortions in any way, shape, or form, except for the life of the mother. If something goes haywire. And you'll always be able to get DNCs there for things like um, excessive bleeding, endometriosis, those things, post-miscarriage. So they uh, take a more common sense approach than the U.S. and so many things, and that's one of them. So while there's no open camping there, I'm going to um, start putting money aside to be able to help others to go camping, to travel to go camping. Mount Everest now has Wi-Fi coverage. <laughs> That's so sad. Have you ever watched any of the movies on Mount Everest? I mean, there are piles of bodies up there, and it's not a very sanitary situation for anybody. I got to say, I don't get why anybody climbs a place that is incompatible with life. It just doesn't. And I've climbed. That's one thing about that's interesting about that stupid television show. The finale is they're making them climb the mountain. And I'm looking at it laughing because all of the wilderness and, and mountain climbing things are in the Lake District in the UK. Now, I'm not saying that it's not wilderness because it is, but clearly it's a more, a less wild wilderness than it is in a lot of places. And that mountain isn't very tall. And I'm watching them climb it and whine. And I'm like, I am crippled up. From a stroke, and I've climbed a volcano twice and wine less than these kids. So, mountain climbing, dark side of Everest or into the depth zone, great documentaries. Yeah, I've seen those, Sarah. I've watched so many documentaries on that because I saw one one time about what a great thing it was at one of the Smithsonian's where they had a documentary on IMAX theaters. And I thought, what kind of crazy fool does that? We have a guy in Tamarindo that has climbed Everest a bunch of times and he trains all year round. You can see him walk in the streets of Tamarindo in the hundred degree heat with a 75 pound backpack going up and down staircases. And you're like, at least I am. I don't get it. So after my mountain ramble, I guess this is going to kind of be like camping and mountaineering. If we help others get out and, and have the medical procedures they need to have. 
it's pretty insane what's going on right now with all of that. And I'm just going to suggest do not post about abortion in great detail on social media unless you're using euphemisms because there are always going to be those people who are going to report you, particularly as this gets worse and worse and the more laws are made about this. Yeah, climbing Mount Everest is not yet a euphemism for cheating on your spouse, but it could be because I read John Crankauer's book about his climb up in the mid 90s where um, the publisher of Rolling Stone, I think his name is Jan Wiener. His wife climbed Everest and supposedly had her some nice little F buddies along with her. And she was still married to him. So cheating on your spouse on Everest has happened already. It has happened, happened, happened. And it could be an it could be a euphemism for cheating. So there's that. Yeah, I know I'm rambling a lot today. Rambling, rambling, rambling. And I'm still stuck on this mountain of what they've done. I have a problem with the Catholic Church making communion a political football. I haven't kept up with that, but I've noticed some of my Catholic friends have complained that that um, before communion this last week, that there were references to how glad they were by the SCOTUS's decision. Yeah. That's a political football if there ever was one. It's just hard to keep up with all of this stuff. So I've kept up mostly with just evangelical town and not even that much as much. I took a year off. And in that year, a lot has happened. So, you know, they're damn well going to take this and run with it. And women in that group are still going to try to have abortions at the same numbers that they've always had it. I'm not disagreeing with the Vatican on that job, a man. The Vatican wants the U.S. to deal with its gun problem in the name of life. I think that's an excellent, excellent, excellent idea. Yeah, I'm kind of liking this Pope. And I don't always like the Popes. The last one was awful. But this one is not quite as bad as some of the other ones. It's a Catholic church, so there are going to be some rules there. I'm never going to agree with. I was raised Catholic. Catholic and Episcopal. My father was Episcopalian. My mother was Catholic. I got drugged to both of them. I had to go to school at some of the places connected with their churches. And it. the only thing that happened was I came out. I came out rather agnostic, which is why it was kind of funny when I fell for Riverfall because I was agnostic for years and years and years. I went with my husband to his Methodist church before we married and was sitting there going, okay, so this is an hour of my life that I have to waste because my husband likes his stuff. The troll that shall not be names claims he was raised Catholic. Java man, I don't believe that for a bit, just from what I know about her. I have spoken out about her a little bit lately because poor Lindsay Chrisley is getting it with both times right now from her and you know amy duggar king is and i just want them to know they are not alone she was complaining about the hours that she invested in holding lindsey chrisley's hand as she went through a divorce and i just wanted to say where are the hours i sent holding her spent holding her hand when her son had open heart surgery they are just down, wasted hours that I could have been doing something better, something more fit and, and believing. So I don't think she was raised Catholic. She just, she didn't have the guilt, number one. Those of us that were raised Catholic have a lot of that, a great deal of that. As one of my closest friends, whose name is Reva, likes to say, Catholics rent guilt, Jews own it. She's Jewish. That's her always been her thing. And her and I 
been for many years, like almost 40 years now. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, it has been almost 40 years now. It's like 36, 37 years we've been friends. We met when our husbands were in the military. We're still buds, even after all this time. So I don't think the troll has ever been Catholic. I don't think she was raised Catholic. Some of the things she said about her evangelical church leads me to believe that she has never had much of a church relationship with anybody or anything. She may even raise Lutheran or uh, actually not Lutheran, probably something like Presbyterian, Methodist, or um, maybe Episcopal. And Episcopalian is very close to Catholic, but it's still not Catholic. <sighs> My father, and it's kind of sad because Years and years later, I met the Episcopalian priest again, who my who'd been in charge of the church my parents had gone to, and they'd gone undergone marriage counseling from this guy. And I talked to him about that just a little a bit, a little hair. And he just said, Yeah, I told him from the beginning they should go ahead and divorce. And so there's that. So what I, I guess what I'm trying to say there is that. There are people in these churches that are towing the religious line and saying X, Y, Z. Our faith says X, Y, Z, but then in the background they're going, yeah, I think this needs to happen. And they may be secretly helping us taking people camping. So, yeah, this is just, an, I don't know about for you guys, but for me, this is another down day, just thinking about this stuff. I was hoping that when I finished writing my book that I would have, have exercised all the stuff from my soul and I wouldn't have to write about it, talk about it, think about it again. But all I can say is I don't think that the fight is over. I think the fight is going to be ongoing for a long time, particularly now that they've started to target uh, Irish Catholic in Boston. I know some of what that's like, Brenda Lee. I was raised Catholic in Louisiana, South Louisiana, where it's the most prominent religion. And I always laugh about Catholic schools. Like the saying that if you misbehaved in Catholic school, you'd get it from the nun. You'd get it on the way home from every mother in the neighborhood. And then you'd get it again when you got home. Java man, he really is in some ways. And but I'm afraid he's going to get back in power. And this is the me that wrote an article for Pathios when he was elected that said, let's not freak out over this guy yet. Let's give him a chance to see what kind of president he's going to be. And I was hoping he was going to be a good president all the way through his response to COVID. For me, that ended ended it for me. And I was kind of like, F this guy. My friend's very Catholic and she married a Greek guy. So they had a full Catholic marriage mass thing in the morning. And in the afternoon, there's a full Greek mass thing. It was a lot. I bet it was, blood, but I bet it was beautiful in some weird sort of way. I bet it was. I've never minded the Catholic wedding masses. Hey, Jan. So I'm going to try to go on every day around this time for the next week or so before I travel back to Costa Rica. I'm going home again on the 6th. I tried to time it. So I'm coming home about a week before my husband so I can clean the house because you and I know that I have a house sitter there, but I don't expect my house sitter to keep it as clean as I would keep it. I also have had some issues with the hot water tank right before I left. It's still oozing. It needs to be replaced. So I don't care how nice your housekeeper, house guest, house sitter is. There's still going to be some cleaning issues. So I want to get all that done. I also want to go through all the closets and do everything. One of the things I've done on this trip is I bought a few little clothes. Not many. I don't know about you guys, but the pandemic has done a number. I mean, you know, I was talking about my gut earlier. I got my gut. I'm not ashamed. This body has carried me through 62 years of my life. But this, I would like to see it get a little less. And I don't know about you, but I was clothes in three different sizes. I'm going to sort them. I'm going to take the ones that don't fit out. I'm going to take the ones that are too big out, the ones that are too little, and I'm going to pack them away and mark boxes and all of that. 
I want to do that when my husband's not around because I don't want to hear his mouth about, why do you have so many damn clothes? It's like, well, so I just don't want to hear his mouth. I want to do it. He always fusses whenever I start sorting things around him and says, you got way too much stuff. Ah, uh, two pounds. Oh, my God, Java man. That is crazy. I wish I'd only gained two pounds. I've lost a few of the pounds, but I still haven't lost enough. And I'm here in the States and I'm eating all that processed food you guys have here. It's messing with my stomach. And um, yeah, so I'm going back to where I have to cook every meal from scratch pretty much again. And I think I'm going to buy another suitcase, a third suitcase, and just load it with canned goods and things that I can't get there. Because it would be nice to have canned jelly for every now and then and canned beans because you can't get that there. I might as well. It's the only way I'm going to ever be able to bring that thing into the country. And I had to laugh. The lady who's picking me up from the airport is already asking, can you drink? Can you get the X, Y, and Z for me while you're there? So I have a shopping list for her, too. <laughs> Talking about guns, I saw a sad cartoon of a veteran asking a little kid visiting a cemetery, why are you here? The response was second grade, third period. The school shootings need to stop. Barbara, absolutely. The problem is I don't know of a good way to make them stop except for maybe banning assault rifles, because that's mostly what's been used in these things. And let's face it, assault rifles are only good for two things. Well, actually one thing, killing people. If you use them to hunt, you're just going to turn your, you're going to turn Bambi to ground round. It's not good for anything else. Oh, Brenda Lee, I don't have the cycle fluctuations any longer after my hysterectomy, but I, I get you. I hear you. I still have to have fat pants for those days when you eat and you're like, oh, my God, my stomach, which I almost had one of those last night. Um, the East Coast peeps, pollo con pero. Pollo con pero is delicious. It's from uh, Central America, I believe, or South America. They have a couple in Costa Rica that I go to. But they also have them in Northern Virginia and all over the place. Best chicken you've ever put in your mouth. Well, it costs a lot to take canned stuff home, like with the weight. Belinda, what I'll have to do is I will, I, one thing that is an essential for travel is a suitcase weigher. <laughs> I have a suitcase scale. So what I'll do is I'll shift and how I'll have a mixture of light and heavy in every suitcase so that I can be under that 50 pounds. And that was a shock the other day buying the plane tickets because I saw a really good deal on Frontier Airlines to fly back to Costa Rica for nothing, very, very little. And I almost booked it. I started booking it. And then I started looking at their suitcase charges and what they consider a proper weight and size of a suitcase. And I was like, oh, my God, none of my suitcases meet their regulations. So I'd have to pay for oversized luggage. And I would have to pay for overweight luggage because on this flight, the international one, they're only allowing you 30 pounds. Let me tell you, I load my big suitcases all the way to 50 when I go back to Costa Rica. And I know people who've moved to Costa Rica who load there, who have sent giant boxes they fill with $50 worth of stuff when they move to there. Sometimes it's an easier, cheaper solution. But as much as they charge and the weight restrictions they had, I just had to say, no, I'm better off flying American or Delta and paying for the higher ticket. Um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders said that she wants children in the womb to be as safe as they are in the classroom. I saw that and I was like, how can you possibly be that acluistic and keep functioning? Um, I saw that she's running for governor somewhere and she, she won the primary. I am absolutely appalled by that, that anybody would consider her appropriate for that. I know a lot of people on the liberal side used to make fun of her for her appearance, which is unfortunate because I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again about that troll. Don't attack the looks. Don't attack the crooked chin, the weird eyebrows. Don't attack any of that because I would like to think as women, as society, we're getting past that. And what's going on Governor of Arkansas. I had a feeling that's where it was, but I didn't see because we don't, we get very, we get some news about the states in Costa Rica 
but not detailed news. You have to really dig and go to CNN and turn CNN International, CNN US. It's a mess if you want to look at US news. And so that's sad. And I think, I, I still think they should ban assault rifles. If they won't ban assault rifles, the only other solution that I can see is to make is to make the ammo hard to get and expensive. Make them register for ammo. You don't want to control guns? Great, let's control ammo. Can't shoot somebody with no ammo. We need to use the ter term pro-birth instead of pro-life. I think so, Barbara. I think that's a better solution. And I also think the people that are screaming the pro-life campaigns, um, slogans need to start caring for the kids that are here. I saw a picture of somebody at a protest this weekend, a counter protest, a pro-life protest that was carrying a sign that said, we will adopt your baby. And they're grinning from ear to ear. And you know, damn good and well from looking at them that they'll only adopt a white baby from a certain class of girl. They, they won't adopt an African-American child. They won't adopt a Latino. They won't adopt a child with issues galore. And that's really gotten sad. Okay, it's almost down where I'm going to go ahead and go. I didn't have no intention of staying on this long, but this is just one of those things that I just keep, keep swirling in my mind. How do we get around this? How do we go forward? How do we support our friends that are pro-life and have the opportunity to talk to them and maybe give them an out if they need an abortion? I mean... They have them at the same rate as everybody else. Okay, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and go. And like I said, no idea how to do this any better, but I'm going to keep talking until I get this thing out. Love you guys.